Good morning, believers. <clears throat> Good morning, Israel. All right. Um, I think I'm back on track. Uh, I don't know if the sp spray from those, uh, that air show, that shit that they were spraying on everyone messed me up or it was just psychosomatic uh, or what, but, um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling better. Um, something about this world. I don't know if it's what I did to myself over the years, alcohol and other abuses. But, um, man, I'm going to be 61 this month and My decisiveness, my decision making is all over the place. I cannot keep my mind straight and I don't know if I'm slowly dementing or what. Pray for, pray for me to get my head together. Um, I don't know if I think too much. <laughs> Maybe it, that could be it too. Maybe I need to just slow myself down. I don't know if the Holy Spirit's um, leaning on me so hard or the, it's demonic attacks. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, I got to go back to my tribe. So today we're going to um, talk a little bit about Rachel and, and Jacob. There's some really important lessons here, and I'm going to try and get the lesson out without just telling the story and standing on the story. So all praise is honor and glory to the Most High Father Yahweh, the existent I Am and His only begotten Son, Shai, Jesus Christ, Solomon. Um, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we learn about this spirit that created us. So, <clears throat> I should have parked, I should have parked totally away from everyone because um, I can't even stand to hear people talk when I'm trying to concentrate anymore. That's part of the problem. I'm so easily distracted it sucks so let me stare at the camera make sure I'm focused maybe put my beads on I pray this lesson is edifying and bring something to the stories that we're, that we tell that he tells we tell the stories that we retell hopefully we're retelling it in the way that pleases the Heavenly Father. We retell it in the right. Mindset. Anyhow. Um, so, <clears throat> Jacob and Rachel. Jacob and Rachel. I'm going to read through Jacob and Rachel and make a few points. Um, this, is, this is story time, so it's probably going to be two or three lessons. Um, I don't want to rush through it. I, I'm I'm studying, and I'm studying with you. So um, know that this is for both of us, not just me. But anyhow, <clears throat> after Jacob had the dream in um, Genesis 28, he made a vow because he he knew that God was blessing him. Right. So this is the vow he made. Um, verse 20 of Jacob 28. And Jacob vowed a vow and saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house 
and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Oh my goodness. I didn't know, I didn't know that was in there. So we've been going through this Benjamin. <laughs> Is that one tribe that um, was given to Solomon and David that he was given one tribe and I was showing that it was Benjamin it has to be Benjamin that's the only one it could be because now that we see that um, Jacob did the same thing his dad did he gave one tenth he gave the tithe Wow. So see what happens? You go back to these stories. It's like he's cracking my skull to the white meat with this stuff. So the pillar, I talk about this all the time too. Um, the pillar of the temple holds up, holds up the roof and it sits on the, on the base. So it's, it's between heaven and earth. The pillar, right? It sits on the earth, but it's it reaches up to the ceiling, have it the heavenlies, the firmament, the ceiling. So when you think of the pillar, you're thinking of the connection between heaven and earth. Now I will set up a pillar. So he set up a rock, and they call it Bethel, the house of God. Bethel. So as soon as this happens, this is what's interesting. When you read the Bible, you you Really, I I didn't realize how intricate the um you have to be of what's right before the part you're reading and what's right after the part you're reading, and that's where GMS and these guys, these preceptors, they are good at making a claim on whatever their vain imagination is, but it's not telling the whole story because they're not reading it as a story. They'll throw in all this history and stuff, but they don't get to the point of what that means other than we're the black Hebrew Israelites. We're going to rule the world. We're Judah. Esau Edom's a white man. We're going to fucking kill them, torture them like they tortured us. All that really wicked bullshit they talk. So anyway, um, uh, bread to eat and raiment to put on. You'll always have... You'll always have a cloak, the raiment. You'll always have a cloak. He'll always cover you, and you'll always, you'll continually be eating at his table, like Mephibosheth did, Jonathan's son. The reason I'm doing this lesson today is because my brother, um, seer of Amoth, the seer of truth, seven seven seven, Amoth, A H M A T H. All caps if you want to check them out. Um, <clears throat> was talking about how Benjamin or uh, Saul wanted to please man, and so I've been I've been meditating on that because it's true. Um, that was, you know, for me I'm kind of close to the to the family, and it's hard for me to. It's good for someone to say it without saying it out of um, hatred or spite for my for my family line, and so when he says that, it's true. He's that's right. Saul was very much um, a man of the world, and that's where he made his mistake. He was more. He loved his people. He loved his people, and that's what we got to look at. We got it. Why did why did Saul? disobey God because Saul actually loved his people that much that he's like, I, I, I figured you'd let me love on the people. I figured you'd give me a pass. The Lord's all, I, <laughs> I'm giving you a pass. I made you king, dummy. So when we think of this, um, Saul loving, this is where, this is where the story, this is what I'm going to try and get out of the story. What happened to the line of Saul? What happened to Benjamin was one, all their wives were destroyed. 
in Judges 19. They had no wives. They have no, they have no connection to family. And so when we think of that connection to family, and that's what's going wrong in this fucking world right now. No one gives a fuck about each other's family unit. That's why we see these fucking people come in and drag kids away from their parents. Let the parents deal with the kid. If the parents end up killing the kid, that's their deal, not your deal. That's a sacred place. People, man, um, men coming in and destroying other men's families by sleeping um, starting affairs with wives, men sleeping with other men's wives. This shit is... It's what fucked up my life. That's what fucked up my world. So when I go into these things, the reason a lot of that happened to me is the Lord wanted me to realize you are of this... You're, all, you're of this family, but this family has been... fucked up. Now, I think that's why Paul, being a Benjamite said, take this thorn out of my side. You know what the thorn in his side was? He never got no good pussy. He never had a wife. He ever, never had a woman help him. He probably never had a family. He never had anyone. That's why he loved Timothy so much, because it was the son that he never had, right? Do you, you're following me? So besides not having any wives and having your own people fucking ruin you kill all kill your they're the ones that killed the wives and then they vowed not to give any wives so um part of the reason i think the lord chose benjamin by lot and saul by lot to be king over israel first king is because it was an example of what happens when the family unit gets destroyed. The family unit gets destroyed. So not only did he lose his wives, Benjamin, when he was born, right off the fucking get-go, right off the kick, his mom dies. No mommy. He's a single family home for Benjamin. He had no mommy. His wonderful, beautiful mommy, who would rather die than 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 be barren. The Lord heard her pleas. He gave her Benjamin. But she had to die. So right after this story that I just read you about Jacob making a vow, what happens? Jacob made a vow and said, if, if, how's he say it? I'll just read it again. God be with me and will keep me in his way that I go and will give me bread to eat. He made a vow, he'll give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. He'll give me covering and he'll give me the, um, the word. He'll give me, he'll be my friend. He's going to give me bread. He's. I know that he's there because he feeds me. He feeds me through his word. He feeds me through his love. He feeds me through um, the abundance that he gives me. And so that I come again unto my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. Um, so he's saying, as long as as long as you take care of me, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk with you, right? So Jacob made this vow, and that's the vow that we're we're writing on today. That's the that's the main thrust of what's going on with Israel. That's it right there. He's saying, um, I set up a pillar for you between heaven and earth so that you and I can always be in communication. You can always make sure I'm covered when I'm down here and you'll receive me back up to you. Like he says, come again to my father's house. That's regeneration. When I die, when I come to my father's house in peace, I will come back here in judgment without any harsh additives to my judgment because I was accepted back to the father in peace. He's like, Jesus says, here's your son, do as you will. And the father of spirit says, good work, sonny boy, go back and keep doing my work. I love you. Boom. 
back we come. So there's that. So after this valley makes, what happens right after that? I'll read it real quick. You can't study the Bible like precepts. I'm, I, that's not how I've always studied it. I, I've always had to go back and forth and back and forth because it all connects. But I'm not good at telling you how it does because it's really difficult to do. But anyway, then Jacob went on a journey and he came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked and behold a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying there. Three. For out of the well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. What does that stone represent? The stone that was in front of the grave where Jesus was, right? The, what's the well? The well is the water, the upwelling of our Holy Spirit, the spring, the ever, the springing out. And Jacob said unto the men that were at the place, My brethren, when she be? And they said, We are of Haran. And he said unto them, no, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, He is he well? Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together, water the sheep, and go feed them. And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together until they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then we will water the sheep. And while he spoke with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. What did, What was Rachel? She was a shepherd. Do you understand? She was a shepherd. She kept sheep like David, like... Amos, a lot of, a lot of shepherds, and it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. GMS, do men cry, dude? Do men cry, fuckers? We cry because we love. We're not... Uh, we might be austere, but we're austere because we have a heart. Because we don't want to have to cry. We want to keep this shit in order. Fuck! You can be as this austere as you want you don't see the presidents up there crying you know why because they're austere for evil they're keeping a straight face they have no heart they're puppets for the system you dumb fuckers slack you how many times do I have to point this out it's about the heart I don't ever hear anyone in GMS talking about, I fucking love my wife so much. She's such a great wife. I love my daughter. I love my son. I don't ever hear him say that. I love my family. I even love the wives of my youth, those fucking bitches. Because they're the mothers of my children. Fuckers just don't get it, man. And Jacob kissed Rachel. Kiss. The Lord says, oh man, now I'm pissed off. Let me calm down a minute. Um, kiss the son, lest he be angry. What, did, what does Jacob do? He goes, that's how we used to greet each other. With an embrace and a kiss. Face to face, cheek to cheek. Why do you think they're telling us to stay six feet apart? Because it's breaking my fucking spirit. Let me go on. And Jacob kissed Rachel. 29, 11 of Genesis. In the beginning. You got to go back to the beginning. You can't just 
precept your way to fucking Negro paradise. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother. That means relative and that he was Rebecca's son and she ran and told her father. She ran. She was like, whoa, check it out. And it came to pass when J Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him into his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. What's he saying? He's saying we're family. Do you understand? So it goes into Jacob's service for Rachel. Service, people, service. Are you a servant? What did he do to get his family going? He served the Lord. He served his family. He served Laban. Even though Laban was not a very good family member, we don't all have good family members. He served him. How many? I think 14 years. Seven and then seven more. So Laban had two daughters. One was Leah and one was Rachel. Jacob gets tricked into marrying Leah, but he wants Rachel. Rachel was envious of Leah. Leah was spitting out kids like boom, boom, boom. Not going to go into it. Um, so... Joseph gets born, and God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Um, where does it say? One, I think one of the maids helped Rachel get pregnant with, uh, um, what is that stuff? Mandrakes. And Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them Unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of my sons, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? So she's saying, You've you've already can you just can you please just give me a blessing? You're my you're my sister wife. Can you please just give me a blessing? I've been I've, I've stayed in this fucked up family. Uh, I've stayed in this fucked up family all this time because this is where I need to be. This is my fam. You're my family. So then, um, uh, God remembered Rachel and God hearkened to her and opened her womb and she conceived and bared a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. <clears throat> Joseph is, means, um, let's see. Add. Joseph means add. So when you look at the blessing of Jacob to Joseph, it's about it's almost a full page of blessing. Benjamin had one sentence. He rises early, hunts at noon, and brings home the prey. Joseph gets the bow of heaven, gets the the fat of the field, gets the stars from heaven. <laughs> Joseph gets everything. Everything's added on to Joseph. So that being that, um, I'm going to close out, and we'll come back. The, the theme the theme of this message so that we can if, if you just pull up this message believers or, or Israel or whoever stumbles on it that this 
break in family that we see that society's doing to everyone, uh, making everyone stay away from each other, um, not letting you see your loved ones when they're sick in the hospital, all this it's fucking wickedness, man. And that's why that's why everyone's so downtrodden and, and heartbroken right now. And I think that's why I'm heartbroken. This place is a fucking demon-filled nonsense. So I'm going to come back. We're going to talk some more about Saul. Why, why was Saul... Why did Saul care so much about the people? I'll be back. <laughs> 